Hi everyone, this is Kamran Nuri, and in this video we talk about the ocean tides. Everyone knows that the ocean tides or tidal forces are caused by the moon's gravity on the oceans. Also to many, it seems natural to think that the moon is attracting the ocean water and creates a bulge or high tide on its side, like this. If this was the case, we would get only about one high tide in 24 hours. Do you know why? Because if you are in a place where the moon is high above you and you get a high tide, then you would have to wait about 24 hours for the air to go around once and you see the moon up again and another high tide. But everyone also knows that we get two high tides every day. This is because we have another ocean bulge or a high tide on the far end of the air to the moon, like this. This might seem strange to some people. This video explains this phenomenon in detail. In order to fully understand this phenomenon, we need to consider two different things. One is the apparent gravitational field in an accelerating frame of reference, which is, by the way, the basis of Einstein's general relativity. The second one is the Earth and the Moon as a system orbiting around their common center of mass. In this system, the Earth is accelerating toward the Moon as a result of the gravity of the Moon on Earth, and therefore the Earth is an accelerating frame of reference. The combination of the Earth being an accelerating frame of reference and the non-uniform gravitational field of the Moon creates this stretching effect that causes high tides on both sides of the Earth. The rest of this video explains the details of how this works. It also gives insight to some other relevant and interesting phenomena, such as the weightlessness experienced by astronauts and the spaghettification or noodle effect when something falls into a black hole. The apparent field can be demonstrated by a very simple example, a person in an elevator accelerating upward or downward. Whenever a frame of reference is accelerating with the acceleration vector A, the observer in that frame feels they are being pushed in the opposite direction to A, which is the direction of negative A. This feels like there is a gravitational field G prime, which is equal to negative A in that frame of reference which is called the apparent gravitational field. If an actual gravitational field G is already present, then the apparent field in the accelerating frame of reference will be G prime equal to G minus A. Or in other words, the acceleration A of the frame of reference adds a gravitational field vector negative A to the actual field G that is present or as it is usually worded, an acceleration in one direction is equivalent to a gravitational field in the opposite direction. So this is the key point here. This might be very familiar to most of you. To remind you of this fact, let's review some relevant daily experiences. When riding in a car that is making a right turn, the car is in fact accelerating to the right, toward the center of the circular path but you feel that you are pushed to the left. This is sometimes called the centrifugal force. Similarly, when the car is making a left turn, the car is accelerating to the left, but you feel that you are pushed to the right. When riding in a sports car, which is speeding up, the car is accelerating forward, but you feel that you are being pushed backwards. This effect is much more noticeable in an airplane where the acceleration is larger. When riding in a car that is braking to a stop, the car is accelerating backward, but you feel that you are being pushed forward. And finally, in an elevator. This is a person in an elevator standing on a bathroom scale. These are forces acting on the person. Here we only consider what everything looks like from the point of view of the person in the elevator or in the accelerating frame of reference moving with the elevator. If the elevator is not accelerating, the person feels their normal weight, which is what the scale shows. Now the elevator is accelerating upward, then the normal force increases, and the person feels heavier and the scale reads higher. The bigger the acceleration, the higher the apparent weight. Now back to no acceleration and normal weight. 
Now the elevator accelerates downward and the person feels lighter than normal. The larger the downward acceleration, the lighter the person feels. At this point, the downward acceleration is equal to g, or the elevator is in the state of free fall motion, and the person feels completely weightless, like the astronauts in a spaceship orbiting the Earth. Now let's apply this idea to the Earth-Moon system. To exaggerate the effect and to make things visible, this system is not drawn to scale. Drawing to scale, the system would actually look like this. This picture shows the Earth and the Moon and their common center of mass. Since the Earth is about 80 times more massive than the Moon and the Moon is 60 Earth radii away, the center of mass is inside the Earth. It is in fact three quarters of the way from the center of the Earth to the surface as you see. Both Earth and Moon are orbiting this center of mass as this point orbits the Sun on an ellipse. Please see my previous video SPS081 for some more details about these facts. As you can see, the Moon orbits this point on a circle with a large radius and the Earth does so on a smaller circle. As a result, they both have centripetal accelerations toward this common center of mass. The acceleration of the Moon is about 80 times larger than that of the Earth, because the forces are the same, but the Moon is 80 times lighter. As mentioned before, this acceleration of the Earth toward the Moon creates an apparent gravitational field in the frame of reference attached to the Earth. This apparent field, together with the non-uniform gravitational field of the Moon, causes this stretching effect. The rest of this video shows exactly how. In a way, you can in fact see that while the Earth is moving around the center, the water on the far end of the Earth should feel a centrifugal force and tend to go away from the center. This might serve as a simple argument to make sense of this phenomenon. Now let's see how we can get to this result mathematically. To see what happens, let's add the gravitational field of the Moon at different points of the Earth. The closer the point is to the Moon, the greater the field. But the whole Earth accelerates toward the Moon according to the gravitational field of the Moon at the center of the Earth. But from the point of view of the accelerating frame of reference on Earth, this feels like a gravitational field in the other direction. So let's add this new field to the field of the Moon at each point on the Earth. And to make this more visible, let's focus on the Earth. Remember vector addition. To add vectors, we draw the second vector from the end of the first one. The resultant field vectors are from the beginning of the first vector to the end of the second vector. Now if we only look at these apparent gravitational field vectors of the Moon, they have the stretching effect that we were looking for and they create a bulge or high tide on both sides of the Earth. So to review, this phenomenon is caused by the combination of two different factors. One, the apparent or fictitious field observed in the accelerating frame of reference attached to the Earth as it is accelerating in the gravitational field of the Moon. And the second one is the non-uniform gravitational field of the Moon. This effect is much more dramatic when the field gradient is much greater, such as near a black hole. As I mentioned before, astrophysicists call this the noodle effect or spaghettification. Anything that falls into a black hole gets stretched like noodles. Really? Anything? Watch my next video 8.5 for calculations that shows the strength of this effect near black holes. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and share.